Welcome to my Valerie Stewart portrait video series. I hope this series is beneficial to you in many ways. If you've been in my classes before, I hope it's a good reminder of the things we've learned in class, the studies we've done. If you've never painted with me before, I hope that it teaches you something about portraits, maybe something that you've wanted to know for a long time. In any event, enjoy. Join me as we mix our portrait color string. We're going to use white, cat orange, rose matter, raw sienna, dioxazine purple, and Naples yellow. Down here I have burnt umber, Payne's gray, and burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is not normally a part of my skin tone palette, but I put it out and I'll be using it later in this demo. First we're going to take a little bit of cat orange and we're going to mix that with some of our rose matter. If you don't have rose matter, feel free to substitute with alizarin crimson. You'll want to use a little bit more rose matter than cat orange. What you want to look for when you're mixing this color is something that's not too red and not too orange, kind of in between. If your person has real fair skin, and a more of a pinkish hue to their skin, you're gonna probably want a little more pink in it. If your person has warmer skin, you're probably gonna want a little bit more orange in it. So feel free to mix that color. Now we're going to use that color throughout the uh, color mixing line. So we're gonna take a little piece of that color and it's gonna become part of our next color. So grab a little bit of that cat orange rose matter mixture. We'll call it pretty color. I don't know why I started calling it that, but I did, probably because it's the prettiest color on the palette. Set that where you're gonna make your deep flesh, and you're gonna add raw sienna to that. You're gonna use quite a bit more raw sienna than you use the pretty color. You want to create a color that's a nice golden brown. This is gonna be a nice suntan color for Caucasian people. And it's also gonna be a basic skin tone for any people that you're painting of color, African Americans, for example. So you want a nice golden brown for this color. Now you're gonna take a little bit of your deep flesh and you're gonna set it to the side and you're gonna add a little tiny bit of dioxazine purple. Remember that a little bit of dioxazine purple goes a long ways. If you mix this color up and it looks just too purple, feel free to add some more of your deep blush to it to balance that color out. Now once you get that mixed up, you're going to want to wipe your palette knife off. We don't want to take this color anywhere else. So wipe that palette knife off. Now you're going to go back to your deep flesh. Pick up a little bit of that. Don't use the dark skin tone. Go back to the deep flesh. We're going to set that to the side and we're gonna add some white. This is gonna be basic skin tone. This color looks like foundation makeup. It goes lightly over all the skin to tint the canvas to flesh, except for when you're painting someone of color. In that case, like I mentioned before, we use the deep flesh. Mix this basic skin tone up. I think I'll add a little bit more white to that, just make it a pinch lighter. But again, this color gets adjusted depending on your particular person. Okay, that's a great color. It's nice and creamy. And again, see how it looks like foundation makeup. That's going to go lightly over your skin just to tint your canvas. Now we're going to mix our highlight color. For our highlight color, we use white and we use a little bit of Naples yellow. Not Naples yellow light, just regular Naples yellow. And I just puddle those together. You don't have to mix it real well. In some areas, you may need a little more yellow in your in your highlight color and some you may need a little more white so that lets you do that. And that's our color string mix. When I put the drawing on the canvas, I lightly went over some of the lines that I didn't want to lose. Now this is really important. 
when you lightly go over these, you want to soften them down. The biggest problem that most people have is they put these lines on there and then they have real hard lines. So what it ends up is like for the, ha the hands, for example, it'll end up looking like a coloring book when they're done because they've got dark lines around everything. That's not the point. The point to putting these lines on the canvas is just to indicate where those hands are and making sure you don't lose them. Uh, hopefully these lines will be fading into shadow so that they'll disappear but be really careful when you put your lines anywhere on your painting that you keep them soft if it's a real small fine line you keep the line very fine and small okay that's real important um, we're going to be painting this little girl there's some uh, nice things about this original that I've chosen she's wearing a satin dress with lots of lace and, and a veil with uh, the sheer so we'll be able to deal with all of that on this painting, but I want to give you some general ideas. Now the biggest thing that most people forget when they're doing a portrait is general shading. And I've talked to you a lot about general shading. And general shading is when you're putting very basic shadows on your canvas. No, no detail. And we have indicated these little detail spots, but I want you to notice a couple of really important things. I didn't outline the lips. I did the line between the lips, but I didn't outline them. Uh, we don't want her lips to look like she's got lip liner on okay so that's one thing you never want to do I did put a little indicator of a shadow under here because there is a little shadow there I gave her her little nostrils that's fine and a very fine line to indicate my uh, the size of the nostrils but that's all and she's looking down so I went ahead and I just based in the eyeball with uh, the burnt umber but other than that I haven't done anything as far as shading now what we want to do with our general shading is we want to look for areas of the face that are generally darker than other areas of the face. We're going to use a nice big brush. I'm using this nice big nylon brush and we're going to do some general shading. I'll start up here on the hair just to give you an idea. Pick up your burnt umber on your brush and then take your, your rag and kind of wipe that paint back out of the brush. Then you have a very controllable amount of paint that's going to the canvas. Your, your paint won't run away from you. I'm going to come in here and everywhere where she has a little bit of shadow, I'm going to darken. I'm not worrying about the background. See how I'm out in the background? That's okay. I get a little bit of shadow there. The background's going to change anyway. But see how soft that is? If I want more paint in that area, I rub longer. Now her neck is set back behind her head, and so it gets a little bit of a shading. Her skin is very fair, so there's not going to be a whole lot of shadow on her face. She does have shadow around the eyes. That, that helps set the eyes in. I haven't added any more paint to my brush. Just scrub that paint on there. And I apologize if my hand gets in the way. Uh, it's easiest to get a smooth application of paint when you angle your brush directly into the canvas, straight in this way. Don't angle it down. And so it's kind of hard for me, in for the purposes of, the, of this video, to keep my hand out of the way to show you and not angle the brush, so uh, bear with me. I'll do my best to keep my hand out of the way. Okay, a little shadow over the eyes. Now she has some shadow in her hair. Her hair is blonde, but there's a lot of shadow up here. So I'm gonna take, get my paint, put the paint in the brush, wipe the paint out of the brush. I'm gonna come up here where her hair is generally darker and give it some shadow. It gets lighter in through here, and then it darkens again as it comes down here. Now you can put the hair on, like she's got the little bangs coming down here, keep them real soft. I want anything really hard. When you're dealing with hair, all edges need to stay soft. Her ears are in a little bit of shadow, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. If you're not comfortable using this bigger brush, you can go with a little smaller one, but the bigger brush that you can use, the better off you'll be because by using the big brush it doesn't allow you to do any details. It, make, it forces you to keep your painting soft. She's wearing a little crown and I want to show you that because it has the pearls in it. But behind this you see hair because this is just, they're kind of, it's just kind of like a strand of pearls. So what you want to do is anytime you have something that's over say the hair here, you want to paint the hair in behind it so that when you put those pearls on, you're seeing hair through there and it looks more realistic. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint, so give some general shading to the hair. I 
And she's got a little ponytail that comes up like this. And just I'll indicate that. Again, this is just general shading. While we work on our general shading, I'm going to speed the picture up a little bit. This will help us get through this segment. But I want you to notice how everything is broad. The strokes are broad. Everything is soft. It's all about the big stuff. And the longer you can work with a larger brush, the softer your painting will stay. So stay with your large brush. When you get tempted to go to a smaller brush, try working with that larger brush just a little longer. Is all just general shading. This is the most important thing that I can teach you. Do general shading. Do the big stuff first. Your painting will be softer. It'll look more realistic. It'll have a more three-dimensional look. Sometimes we get so busy dealing with the details and what's going to be a temptation for you is when you're putting these little detail areas on, you're going to be tempted to do more with that small brush, just keep going with the small brush. Really force yourself to stop and get your big brush and do your big stuff first. So I'm putting my shadows in on the dress. I'm trying to look beyond the sheer fabric that's here that lays over the dress and see the shadow on the dress itself. When you're doing this um, burn amber underpainting, if you need to, feel free to use some linseed oil in your paint. If you're feeling like you, you need to move that paint a little bit, it'd be real careful, dry your brush out. Um, pretty good before you go take it to the canvas because it can get kind of sloppy on you. Okay, there's some shading there. Let's use this one. You could go with this number four. You could also go with the number six. That would be a good size. Um, I might even find that this number four is a little big. So then we might want to pull in a number eight, maybe do some of the larger areas. I just want to keep it soft, so I have to be really careful about not going too small too soon. Let's do a little bit with the number eight. I know there's a couple areas where I'll want a little bit bigger brush. Okay, now let's go with our smaller brush. This is a number four. The eyebrows are fairly dark, and I treat them like a shadow. When you're putting eyebrows on, where they're darker, make them darker. Where they're lighter, make them lighter. Just treat them like a shadow. Keep your edges of your brows very soft. If you get them too hard, it'll look like she's drawn them on with a eyebrow pencil, and you don't want that. The forehead under the bangs should have some shadow on it because that hair will cast a shadow on the forehead itself. I want to make sure I get some shadow on this, on these bangs, on this forehead for the bangs. Try to think in terms of a scale of 1 to 10. 
10 being anything that looks black or very close to it, 1 being anything that looks white or very close to it, and then everything is something in between. That helped me. I don't know if it will help you, but you might think about that. There's not a hard line here. If you draw a hard line here, you're going to break the hand up away from the arm. But there is a shape.